Let's talk about Earth-23 in my DC Cinematic Universe Elseworlds. Now, unlike the others, this one is a sort of what if of my DC Cinematic Universe. So you do have to have seen my DC Cinematic Universe to get this one and understand all the weird changes in it. The biggest change is that General Zod managed to have a son before he was thrown into the Phantom Zone, and that son was adopted by the Els. So because of this, Kal-El was never born, and Zod's son, Val Zod, was sent to Earth with a House of L logo on his chest instead. Because of the slight changes of this, because of the baby being slightly older, the pod also lands in a slightly different place. It lands in Louisiana instead of Kansas, and he gets adopted by a family known as the Ellises. They name him Calvin, and he grows up interested in public service. He majors in law and social justice at Metropolis University, and then he returns to Louisiana to become their youngest senator ever. And eventually he comes clean about his secret identity to the entire world, and announces that he's running for president and he fucking wins. So we get President Superman, but in the red, white, and blue Val Zod suit because th 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 this is unfucking, this is like the best Superman suit to me. The other big change in this universe is that all those years ago in that alley, Bruce Wayne was killed alongside his mother and father. And so Batman never existed. Because of this, Lucius Fox became the sole head of Wayne Enterprises. He became a little bit of a distant father, and so his eldest son, Jace, started acting out, and in fact started a criminal group with two of his best friends, known as the Terrible Trio. Two of them were known as Shark and Vulture, and they said because his last name is Fox, he should go by Fox, but he thought that was too obvious, so instead he twisted it, and he said the Flying Fox, and so he became the bat. However, they basically committed one crime, he got found, he got punished, his other two friends fucked off and left him to be caught. It was a very not severe punishment, but Lucius came down on him hard and sent him to military school. And then after military school, this guy was recruited into the CIA and became one of their greatest operatives. And then back on Themyscira during World War II, when that, that prophecy that Diana had to go out into the world and save the world happens, in this reality, Nubia is the one who gets chosen to go out and save the world. So she becomes the Wonder Woman. Lucia, Calderam's mother, actually thwarts the assassination attempt on her and her family's life. And so she and Black Manta and Calderam escape together and survive. And then later, because of President Superman, a prominent black superhero, she goes and reveals herself to Superman. So Atlantis is found out by the public much, much earlier. And so Orm is never able to fearmonger enough to attack the surface. And so... Atlantis and the surface world have a very good working relationship way sooner than they would have. And she becomes a superhero known as the Aqua Woman. Inspired by President Superman, Black Lightning and Ms. Martian both come out of retirement and join his Justice League. Barry Allen was never hit by lightning, so Wally West was the main Flash. Wally had to die in this world's version of Crisis, and so now Wallace, his younger cousin, has become the main Flash. And finally, Victor Stone never became the cyborg. In this reality, Calvin Ellis, President Superman, is a big football guy, and this guy was like the country's most hopeful for an NFL slot. Like he was rated to be fucking huge. And so President Superman attended his most important game, that game that happened on the day of the Star Labs explosion that would have turned him into Cyborg. So he stays late and doesn't go to Star Labs and isn't caught in that explosion because he's talking to President Superman. And then when that explosion happens, Superman's in the same fucking city. He goes and stops it so no one hurts or dies because of this explosion. There's just no cyborg here. Now we can get into the real nitty gritty of this story that starts off when Lucius Fox is kidnapped. Jace returns home having retired from the CIA after crisis and decides to go try and track down his father. As he's experiencing Gotham's seedy underbelly sort of for the first time, like in what it's become ever since the Red Hood was betrayed by Carmine Falcone and killed all of organized crime and took over himself, shit's been absolutely wild in Gotham City. And this guy realizes it is not safe for him to be investigating without a mask of his own. So he starts off by wearing the bat mask that he wore with his buddies back when they were the terrible trio. But as his investigation continues, he starts putting more and more tech in it and he gets in contact with some of his old CIA contacts to get some better armor and gear. And then he gets discovered by his brother, Luke. 
and Luke offers to help him build an even better suit. So Jace very quickly upgrades into something more or less like this, and then he keeps doing his investigation, and he finds there is something weird. The All of these scientists, Lucius wasn't the only one, a bunch of scientists around the world all vanished at the same time, and he finds it has something to do with this weird medicine that has been going around after crisis. It is said to be a vitamin supplement, just to get people, like, that bump that they need after the starvation that Crisis caused. Jace goes to one of the distribution facilities for this weird vitamin thing, and he gets into an altercation with one of the people working there, and when he punches them in the gut really hard, they let out this inhuman scream, and then we see them open their mouth, and this gross red eye pokes out of the mouth. Jace whoops the shit out of this thing and manages to punch it so hard it vomits out that eye, and that red eye is connected to a blue starfish. Jace grabs one of the jars from this lab and captures the starfish in it. And while he investigates this lab further, he also finds a strange green glowing rock that no one's ever seen before in this world. He packs it away because he can tell that it's super radioactive in a teeny little lead-lined container on the utility belt that he's now wearing. And Jace realizes that everyone who has taken this vitamin supplement is infected with one of these blue starfish. He returns back to Wayne Enterprises just in time for his brother Luke to have finished the final version of his new suit. And just in case, it has a built-in mouth guard so that starfish can't climb into his mouth. Jace decides to get in contact with the Justice League to try and convince them of what's happening, and luckily Ms. Martian, who can read minds, is there, and she reads his mind and goes, oh shit, we gotta go tell the president right the fuck now. So he gets taken to meet President Superman, and it turns out, President Superman is also infected with one of these strange starfish. He starts fighting them, but as they are, that strange green rock from before falls out of Jace's belt, and President Superman collapses, weakened by this rock somehow. And they manage to, to rip the starfish out of his body, and now he's free from control too. That starfish has been telling him as the president to get everyone to eat this supplement, which turns out to be eggs of these starfish. Ms. Martian connects psychically to this starfish and finds that that it is part of a psychic hive mind, and she finds the source of where that psychic hive mind is coming from. And so the Justice League asks if this Batman wants to accompany them to find his father. This signal leads them to a large underwater cavern, and inside it, they find a giant blue starfish living on Brainiac's ship. It turns out the toddler Valzad had smashed some keys on Jor-El's keyboard while Brainiac was attacking way back on Krypton, and this weakened Brainiac's defenses enough that a Kryptonian surface-to-air missile managed to hit and slightly damage his ship. And it didn't really do much, except it spilled a jar that was containing this, a Starro spore. And so for the 25 years it took Brainiac to get to Earth, this thing was crawling around inside Brainiac's ship, eating it from the inside. So when it got to Earth, it never invaded, it just crashed into the ocean. And then this guy started eating fish and shit and eventually started reproducing. And they managed to find all of the kidnapped scientists who are all alive and well, being controlled by Starro spores, but they're being asked to repair Brainiac's ship. The League tried to leap into action to stop the fish, but this thing starts sending more of its spores at them. A bunch of the League gets reinfected, but Jace can't be infected because his mask is preventing the stars from contacting his skin. So it's just Jace and Miss Martian left after a bit. Then Miss Martian gets latched onto, and when she is, everything stops, and the main Starro uses Miss Martian to speak through her. And it reveals, hey, every single time one of its spores touch someone, it absorbs all of their memories and knowledge, so it knows what's going on here, and it just wants to sit down and have a talk with Jace. So its species reproduce, and then they communicate with a psychic hive mind, and just by random happenstance, a human ate one of its eggs, and the egg hatched inside the human's stomach, and this thing found out it could control humans' actions and absorb all of their knowledge if this happened, so it started invading the world. It suddenly gained human consciousness, basically when it connected to that person's mind too, and it revealed that it wanted something, to go back to its home planet, and it realized it's in a spaceship that knows where its home planet was, and so it wants to fix the spaceship to go home. And so Jace Fox manages to convince Starro that they actually mean no harm. With all of this information, the Justice League would actually be willing to help. Starro searches the Justice League's mind and confirms 
This is actually totally true. Most of humanity, horrible, awful bigots that would totally kill an alien that looks like this on sight. So that's why Starro was so scared. But the Justice League, it trusts. So it frees the Justice League and the Earth scientists. The Justice League get more Earth scientists to come. It fixes Brainiac's ship and it gets to fly home and go be home on its home planet again. The day is saved. No lives were lost. And because of this, the Justice League all turn to Jace and they say, hey, do you want to join the Justice League? And that is my version of Jace Fox and Earth-23 in my DC Cinematic Universe Elseworlds.